Hey guys, it's DC here, and today I want to go over the top pain cybersecurity positions at the moment. So I've put together a list from uh, Robert Half and Payscale and a couple of different uh, job seeking websites like Seek and Indeed to uh, to build this list together of uh, the highest paying jobs in cybersecurity at the moment. So yeah, let's jump over and take a look. Now it might come to a surprise or it might not come to a surprise to you that uh, the Chief Information Security Officer or CISO is the highest paying cybersecurity position out there. To get this sort of job, you need to have a lot of experience. You need to have probably an MBA. You need to have potentially other manager experience, at least as like an IT manager. And managing other organizations would obviously help you to get this sort of job. The uh, information I have here is that uh, CISOs earn roughly 100,000 US to 500,000 US dollars, depending on their experience, where they're gonna be working at, and yeah, basically uh, what sort of reputation they currently have. The thing with these sort of jobs is that um, reputation matters quite a lot. So for example, if you're moving from being like the, the CISO of Disney, which is um, they probably don't have a huge amount of security to be covered when compared with someone like Google or Amazon. So when they're working for Disney, they're probably making like 200 to 300,000. They move to Amazon, they're gonna be on that uh, higher pay scale because there's there's more to cover, basically. I'll do a quick read over here of the uh, the information I gathered off this website. So it says, Senior level executives are typically well paid and CISOs are no exception. Chief information security officers, also known as chief security officers or CSOs, are extremely valuable to the companies in which they work because they uh, offer the best of both worlds, business savvy and technical skills. CISOs also need to have management chops They'll be overseeing security engineers and managing the company's incident response team, but this isn't a hands-off management role. Not only are CISOs responsible for an entire company's data privacy, regulatory compliance, threat prevention, adherence to security practices, and the list does definitely go on. Uh, they'll also need to roll up their sleeves and assist with incident response alongside their team. So what that basically means is if there's something that's escalated to the point where your CISO needs to uh, help with that problem, um, that's that's something that does happen. I've seen it happen in a few organizations that I've worked at, especially within government where the teams tend to be slightly smaller or um, more segmented than uh, like a private organization in which they're, they're sort of like a mash of everyone together. Uh, yeah, you, you definitely as a CISO do have to help out every now and then. It's just the, the nature of the industry. Next one is a senior security consultant. So this is sort of what I'm, I'm trying to get into at the moment myself as a uh, security consultant working for myself for a managed service provider. It says here that uh, you can get 76 to 162 thousand US dollars, which in um, Australian dollars translates pretty well to around a hundred and something thousand Australian to up to around 200 ish thousand dollars Australian. The description here says senior security consultants help to minimize an organization's security risk by analyzing current security settings and providing recommendations on better practices, procedures, software and tools. So that's essentially exactly what I was doing in my last job before I then got brought in as a SOC team lead. So I was, I was again working for a, not my own MSP at the time, but another one in Brisbane. And uh, what they wanted me to do is to come in and do a, a security audit of uh, their systems. So I outlined all of these problems and then I, I presented it to them and said, this is the recommendations I have. And uh, yeah, then they brought me in and said, how about we give you a, a role as a security uh, SOC team lead and uh, you can just stay here for a year and uh, overlook all of um, these recommendations that you've put in and make sure that the project gets done. Yeah, it's uh, I get I, like I've already done that job before. I'm now trying to do it for myself instead of through another managed service provider because those guys take a, a pretty big chunk of the cream off top um, and, and leave the engineers with a little bit less, but that's okay. It's, it's the nature of the industry. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> Next up, we have security engineers slash security team leads, which as I just discussed, 
was exactly what I did for that particular government organization. They earn US 59,000 to 180,000 US dollars on average. And uh, the description says some technologists want to stay as far away from management positions as possible. So they stick to security engineering roles, which is fair enough. Management and uh, people skills are sometimes not the, uh, the top of the list for what people want to do, which is fine. Security engineers work to prevent breaches or minimize their impact should they occur. So they're working on more of the blue team side of things where they're defending environments and making sure everything is A-OK -okay, or at least hopefully A-OK. -okay. The typical job is securing and monitoring systems and networks, installing firewalls and encryption programs, hunting down vulnerabilities within their own company's network and systems and responding to security incidents. There's also a lot in there, which I guess is included in that firewall thing, which is managing rule sets, which is a massive part of it. Um, and also involves a lot of um, log viewing and uh, making sure that, yeah, those vulnerabilities are uh, being kept up on check. So then onto the security team leads, which is basically exactly the same as a security engineer, except that you have to manage a team of uh, SOC analysts or engineers. And you also have to talk with management to tell them, basically translate what's going on from the engineer's point of view to the management and risk side of things. So there's there's just a lot more, um, I guess, people skills involved here where you really have to articulate what you want to get across or what you have to get across so that these other uh, upper management teams understand what's going on and basically what they're paying for. It's uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting role to do actually. It's the the last time I did a SOC uh, team lead was the first time I've ever done it. And it was, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was sort of like, uh, I guess, working for yourself inside of a team, but also being the, uh, the one point of failure. So, uh, if, for example, something goes wrong, it's your head on the chopping block, not the team. And um, that's just something that comes with being, I guess, a team lead or um, like a management type position. Although SOC team leads really aren't management in a way or they're not classified as. But anyway, that's a conversation for another time. Next up, we have data security analysts, which are those, um, we usually call them in the government in Australia, SOC analysts, which is, um, it's basically the same thing here, but I'll read through the description. Data security analysts work to protect the troves of sensitive data that companies store, such as credit card details, billing information, customer data, and more. A big focus is typically on the cloud servers on which stored data is housed. This role entails determining what data can and should be stored in these vulnerable locations and to create protocols to secure information. Data security analysts report potential vulnerabilities and corrections for the IT security team to follow up on analyze access data to determine who accessed it, when, where, and how often. So it's um, it's actually, there's a bit more to it than that. It's, um, it's basically the uh, entry level of security and it's also somewhere around where uh, it's like the entry level of a security engineer as well. So usually what would happen is um, when there's like a, a ticketing system, which there always is, the security analysts or data analysts or SOC analysts, those analyst positions, depending on what level as well, they jump on that queue and they go through those tickets, they escalate it to the engineers who are usually working on projects and then that will eventually become part of the SOC team leads problem who then reports it to the CISO. So I hope that sort of explains the uh, the range of, of how this sort of happens. Security analysts are averaging 46,243 US dollars to 171,500. Now the reason for that enormous jump in wages is because there are different levels of SOC analysts. It's not just like a, a, a SOC analyst position. Like I said before, there is the data security analyst, there's a security analyst, there's a SOC analyst, there's SOC analyst level one, two, three. It's, um, they structure analyst positions very much the same as how a managed service provider or MSP is organized. And um, yeah, it's, it's sort of like segmented like that. So I guess you're very, very entry level, you're green as you've come straight out of uni, SOC analyst position or security analyst position, you're likely to get about 46 to 50,000 US dollars, which is, it's pretty normal. And it's, it's not a bad wage either. Next up on the list, we have Penetration testers, which is um, the one I probably get asked about the most. It says here, pen testers look for vulnerabilities within a company system to find areas of weakness before hackers do, sometimes. So we, we all basically know what a pen tester does. They're, they're there to penetrate the environment to uh, potentially find vulnerabilities, outlight them, and then um, so that they can pass it on to a security engineer or SOC analyst to 
than Pat. It says here the average wage of a pen tester in the US is 47,000 US dollars to 130,000 US dollars. And uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think that is uh, spot on and it, it translates to Australian dollars pretty much exactly what you would expect to get paid here. Pen testers, I wouldn't put it um, as an entry level position as such, but it can potentially be if you have the right set of certifications and some experience before. It's easier to go into a pen testing position knowing how a system works and having worked with those sort of systems and then going into pen testing rather than just being a pen tester and looking for vulnerabilities, I find personally. Often um, pen testers don't actually work inside the organization and um, at least from what I've seen anyway, they're usually employed externally. So for example, like a, a government organization or a uh, enterprise size organization, they wouldn't employ someone internally to pen test their own system. It's usually not um, in line with their compliance. What they would normally do is actually go to an external company like a specific pen testing company and say, we want you to audit our systems. Uh, come on in and uh, yeah, just, just go ham on it. We give you full permission. Here's the written document that says it's A-OK -okay and you're not doing anything illegal. So we won't sue you afterwards basically. And uh, yeah, they send out some engineers and they pen test the environment and they do it fairly discreetly so that it's uh, just like a real world uh, situation. Now there is a list here of new and emerging cybersecurity positions with the money values varied. The reason for these um, new emerging positions is because cybersecurity is becoming an industry of its own, sort of away from IT as a whole, um, similar to how like software engineer teams work. So like for example, some of these jobs here like application security architect, uh, cloud security architect, cloud security specialist, uh, IT security auditor, uh, security liaison, security operations manager, uh, software security specialist, risk management director. They're all like little offshoots of specific areas. And basically what it looks like they're trying to do is segment the industry to be a little bit better structured, I guess. So it's not just like a you're thrown in a security team, which is basically part of the IT help desk. They're trying to, uh, organizations anyway, are trying to uh, sort of separate the teams out from being IT because it can get very distracting when you're working in an IT team and then a help desk guy comes along and says, hey, there's this problem with um, this person's password. Do you think that's a security problem? And you're like, no. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting to see that uh, this is sort of happening. The list here for uh, money value on these is, uh, it could be like 50,000, it could be 100,000, could be 170,000. Anything in between, really, it's, um, it depends on, again, the size of the organization, whereabouts you are in the world, and uh, yeah, basically what uh, that company's annual turnover is and what they can afford. So yeah, anyway, that's my list of the highest paying cybersecurity jobs at the moment. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all on the next one. Have a great day and have a good life.